Who are you waiting for? no electricity. Would you like to come next door with me? I just want to stay here. Uh, I know where there are candles and things. Well, Tom should be here shortly. Fair enough. Uh, but remember, I'm just through the wall if there's anything you want. Or if you change your mind. Why are you here, Lizzie? Felix. Felix is in bad trouble. He killed Mummy. Turn right at the top of the stairs, love, and then it's first on your left. On to the left. Yes, good night. Good night, Philip. Nice to see you. Good night, Oscar. Good night, Red. Look. Look at this. Yes? Good night, Oscar. Where? Well, Loretta is on her own down at Shaw House with Lizzie, and it's the weekend. So? He's always there at weekends. Bridget, what are you talking about? You have to use your car. But I don't have one. You don't have a car? Well, not here. Bloody good do! Hey, Oscar! Fine bunch of men when you see them like that together. Eating, drinking. Renaissance princess. This way, sir. Yeah. Reg! Reg! Grand speech, Reg. Family values. Spot on. Well done, Reg. Thanks very much. Family <laughs> values. Can't be them. My wife's a saint, you know. Saint. <laughs> Is there a Mrs. Oscar? Oscar? Yes, sir. My mother. Sure has, Ted, fast as you can. Oh, wonderful things, mothers. I've got a mother. Have you really, sir? sort of angry with mummy, but I never thought he'd really hurt her. Then he told those lies. He didn't have glasses. He phoned me and asked me to come and throw them into the sea. She had to put these on, but she drove. Always. Maybe she forgot. Lizzie, your mummy was on her own when she crashed. But why are they all smashed up? Why did Felix hide them? I don't know. I don't know the answer to any of these questions. I can only guess. And that's nearly always a very silly thing to do. The really brave thing is to wait until we know the truth. Hmm? Oh, what's going on? What's all that bloody water doing there? Thought we'd take the coast road, sir. Lovely moon. You what? Who the hell are you? Is that Daddy? Yes, yeah, Daddy. Hey, how are you? What on earth made you come here? 
Tyler at. glasses. Listen, I want you to stay here for a moment and I have to go and talk to your daddy, okay? Everything's going to be all right. Sandra called me that night. She said she had something important to discuss with me. I thought, I kidded myself, that it was about her coming back to live with us. You see, I, I didn't know that Felix had overheard the conversation, and he followed me back here after I dropped him off at the party. He told me after that he watched us arguing till he couldn't take it anymore. And he ran back to the party. And what did she want? Lizzie. She wanted Lizzie. She decided to go to Australia the next day, and she wanted to take Lizzie with her. She wouldn't listen. I just wanted her to listen, so I, I grabbed her. I knew she was on the floor. And she didn't move. Felix must have found the glasses later and hidden them to protect me. So, after she'd fallen, what happened then? I phoned George. He came over and he took her pulse. And he persuaded me that we had to make it look like an accident. Yes. Yes, I did. Sandra was dead. There was nothing to be gained by telling the truth. That wouldn't have brought her back. It was time to, to think of the children, of, of Lizzie and, and Felix. Those children needed a father. So you both decided to fake her accident? Uh, well, I, I went to phone the police. And when I came back, uh, Tom had left, and he'd taken Sandra's body with him. George. And I think he was absolutely right to do that. That's not what happened. Because sometimes you have to put the children first. But she wasn't dead. What? That's nonsense. No, no, I, I read the pathologist's report. The time of death was stated as some time after the crash. She was still alive when she went over that cliff. You said she was dead. Uh, not at all. You took her pulse. You said she's gone. Tom. We dragged her to the car. And we put her in the car. And we pushed her over the cliff, and she was still alive. What does it matter, anyway? I mean, now's not the time to lose your head over that whore. Don't call her a whore. Well, what would you like me to call her? She was a whore. And you made it very easy for her, didn't you? I mean, what did you think we were doing all those summer months when you were busy? And we were left here alone, hmm? What do you think? It was your fault. And it wasn't difficult to wear her down. I can tell you that. You killed Paul Elvin. Yes. She wouldn't stop. Boring. But that boy, that kid, that schoolboy, 
cricketer. I set her up in a flat. I paid for everything. I found them together. In my bed. And she was going to take Lizzie away. Lizzie! Lizzie! 